Hey guys, this video will look at the concept of a dirty floating exchange rate. Now, in international trade, the exchange rate is the value of one currency in terms of another. So the exchange rate, and this has been the nominal exchange rate, is the value of one currency in terms of another. And now there are two types of exchange rates. Firstly, the fixed exchange rate, and secondly, the floating exchange rate. And since 1983, following the financial systems deregulation, Australia has adopted what is known as a floating exchange rate. And a floating exchange rate is where the value of the Australian dollar is determined by market forces of supply and demand. Of supply and demand. And so at equilibrium we can see that the USD to Australia exchange rate, for example, the quantity supplied we know that the Australian, the supply of Australian dollars is constant at any given time, and the demand has a negative slope. So, the equilibrium level is determined by this market forces of supply and demand. So that being the E or the fundamental exchange rate. I'm just going to call that E1. Supply one and demand one. Okay. So that's the concept of a floating exchange rate and that's what Australia has adopted and if you want to go further into depth of what a floating exchange rate actually is uh, I'd encourage you to look at our lecture on the floating exchange rate so Australia has adopted what is called a floating exchange rate however the dirty float is sort of an amalgamation of both the fixed and a floating exchange rate and what that means is that the RBA can affect the market value of the AUG as it wishes by becoming a net buyer or seller of the AUD. So in that case it can manipulate the exchange rate by affecting the supply or demand for the Australian dollars. Nowadays, it is only in very special occasions that the RBA adopts this dirty float tactic, which could, in fact, lead to uh, so which could, in fact, lead to uh, domestic instability. So it is it is only in dramatic cases where the where the RBA actually adopts a dirty float tactic and so these are say um, erratic or uninformed changes to international transactions so say the GFC or very very un very volatile changes in economic activity overseas that the RBA adopts this dirty float so they adopt this dirty float in order to stabilize domestic economic policy only in the face of international or overriding uncertainty so in most cases they don't actually adopt the dirty float, but it is there for the RBA to use in times of uncertainty. So we're going to look at how the RBA can apply this idea of becoming a net buyer in their seller. So instead of fixing the exchange rate at one price, it could actually manipulate the price of the exchange rate as it wishes. So if it wanted to decrease the value of the exchange rate, it could act as a net seller, or it could act as a net seller of the Australian dollar. So what it does, it increases the supply of the AUD from S1 to S2. When it increases the supply, we can see that the equilibrium price would actually decrease from E1 to E2. When it acts as a net buyer in order to increase the demand for the Australian dollar, you can see the demand shifts from D1 to D2 or D3 
and as a result, the equilibrium price of the exchange rate increases from E1 to E3. And that's how the RBA can manipulate the Australian dollar to change the, the value or the fundamental value of the Australian dollar. And this is very important because it does, the Australian dollar does affect our external stability, our income distribution, inflationary rates, economic growth, and even for employment to a very indirect extent. And you can look at how the exchange rate actually affects these five different economic goals in our specific lectures for those economic goals. But now that we've learned the concept of the dirty float and how the RBA can actually manipulate manipulate the exchange rate by becoming either a net buyer or a seller of the Australian dollar, we can see how the RBA can use this as a demand management policy in Australia.